Hi everyone and welcome! In today's video, we will learn how to change the password of a domain credential using the LDAPS protocol. Before we start, it's important to understand that there is an important requirement to any successful password change. We must have installed the SSL certificate in the Active Directory. So make sure you have already installed your certificate and that your Active Directory is all set up. To change the credential password, Sensegura will use the LDAPS protocol and port 636. If your environment requires it, you can change the port the platform uses. But these steps require the SSL certificate to be installed in the Active Directory first. If you don't have the certificate, when you try to change the password, you will see an error message saying can't connect to LDAP server. This error message means that the LDAPS protocol, which requires an SSL certificate, couldn't complete the handshake with the end device. Here you can see my Windows Server and the Active Directory. We will use a very simple structure. I'll try to get as close as possible to a production environment. So I have here an OU with employees and inside it the IT employees OU. In the IT unit I can see a user called Gustavo Costa who will be my destination user. We will change his password. Right-click the name to go to properties and here we can see that this is a regular domain user listed in the IT folder. To change Gustavo's password, we need a service credential. That means we will use a second credential to log into the Active Directory to change Gustavo's password. I can find this credential under the Services OU in the Credentials folder and is called SRV underline Sensegura. I have imported all that to Sensegura. You can see my device here, but don't forget that your device must have LDAPS connectivity. I'll test it to make sure it works. But be careful, a successful test doesn't mean the SSL certificate is installed. This is just a Telnet port test. If your Windows Server has Active Directory certificate services installed by default, the port will probably be open but you will need to install the certificate. I have also imported the destination user and identified it as gcosta and the service user is srv underline Sengasegura. Let's now move on to the template. Go to Executions, then Settings and Templates. Here I have the template that I want and I'll now click the Edit button to show you the structure. The most important thing is the bind. This is the authentication credential. In this example, SRV underline in Sengasegura. It is important to know the distinguished name of both authentication and the target credentials. Here. For the authentication credential, I can validate the distinguished name by right-clicking the credential, going to Properties, and Attribute Editor. If this tab is not enabled, go to View and turn on Advanced Features. Let me get back. Press the D key to find the attributes that start with the letter D and choose the distinguished name. Here I have the CN, the OU, and the domain. If we compare that to the template, they are exactly the same. Remember, the tag you see here is replaced by the authentication credential when the template is run. If you click on View Tags, you can see what they mean. The Auth User tag replaces the credential for authentication. 
The tag is followed by the other element that we get from the distinguished name. Next, we have find. This refers to the target credential. This is the credential whose password we want to change. I also need to know the distinguished name of this credential. But in this case, remember the target credentials must be part of the same organizational unit. If you want to access more OUs, you will have to either create one template per unit or use a different Sengasegura feature that I can explain later. But for now, all I want is to search for credentials among my IT employees, which are listed under the employees OU in our domain. If I want to validate this information, I can visit the Active Directory and go back to the user's attribute editor. Yeah, everything is okay. This is the template for comparison. And they are exactly the same. The CN is not in the template because it is actually being searched for here in account name. The username tag is a placeholder for the user whose password we want to change. Finally, at the bottom we have mod replace Unicode PWD. This is the function that actually changes the password in the Active Directory. And the tag here represents the random password that will be generated according to this credential password policy. Very well, I'll close the template. Now I can request a password change. Remember, you should be in the execution menu. Here, you can either choose request password change or if you want to change the password of a single credential, go to list operations. As you can see, I have tried to change the password a few times before and I wanted you to see the error so we could investigate what happened in each case. But first, let me request a new password using the action button in the upper right corner. I'll search for my credential. Now oh, here it is, and then I click save. Done! Our password was changed successfully. The magnifying glass icon takes you to the log file, and you will see the information here is the same we had in our template. But now there is a new password that was automatically generated by Singasegura. Now let's get back to those errors. When preparing for this video, I tested the template a few times before I recorded, and in these tests I hit some road bumps that I think you may find as well. If we look at the log file of my first error, you will see that it says that my credential was invalid. This is a very common error, and if we put the log file of our successful request side by side with the error log file, we can see that the error only goes up to bind, it can't go any further. And since we know that the bind refers to the credential used for authentication and the error message says invalid credentials, the wrong credential is the authentication credential. In this case, SRV underline Sengasegura. This is a very common error and it always refers to the authentication credential. The problem might be the credential's distinguished name or password. In this case, the problem was that the distinguished name of my credential listed a different CN. This here is the name of my authentication credential and the tag on the template uses the name. But if I went to the attribute editor of my credential in the Active Directory, the CN was listed as CRV Sengasegura with no underline. This one character difference was enough to create a conflict between the distinguished name in the Active Directory and in the template. Let me show you. I'll open the template again so we can see why the bind was unsuccessful. Remember, we are still in the execution menu. I'll open a new tab. I think it's easier. Here it is. Well, you see that the tag is always replaced by the name of the credential used for authentication. 
in this case SRV underline Sinasegura. But before I fixed the error, my distinguished name was not that. There was no underline. This means that the distinguished name had no underline, but Senya Segura was searching for a CN with an underline. That is why the bind was unsuccessful. Got it? Let's move on to the second error. I'll open the log file. Here I had already corrected the distinguished name of the credential to include the underline, and the bind was successful. But it found a new error in find. The error message says insufficient access. Okay, so this is extremely important. To successfully change a password of a credential that is not yours, your service credential, that is, your authentication credential, must be a domain admin credential. When I created my credential in the Active Directory, I forgot to move it up from domain user to administrator. That is why when I tried to change another user's password using this credential, I got an error message. So I had to go back there, give it administrator privileges by changing the credential to a domain admin credential, and then finally change the password successfully. Well, now I'll explain something that is also very important. What to do in case you change passwords in different OUs? Uh, one option was to change the template, right? So if we go back to the list of templates and click the Edit button, we see that for now it only searches for IT employees. But if I want to change the password of users in the infrastructure team, I can just change the OU and that would work. But that means you stop changing the passwords of IT employees, right? So one option would be to have a separate template for each. Yeah, that would work. But another option would be to change this option at the top, referrals, to zero. Now, Sansegura will look for usernames in the root directory, and you don't even need the OUs anymore. This way, you can search for all the users in this directory. I'll save the template and request a new password change. Okay, my passwords have been successfully changed. Let's look into the log file to see the changes and... Now I see the domain name alone. This is how you can use a single template to change the password of users in different units. That's it for today and thank you for watching.